<laughs> From the language app Babbel, this is Multilinguish. I'm senior producer Dylan Lyons. The thought of learning a new language can be daunting. So naturally, people are always looking for shortcuts, for ways to passively learn a language. In this episode, we'll explore some of these learning hacks. Can you actually gain something from ASMR, hypnosis, crystals, or learning in your sleep? Or is it all just wishful thinking? Today, we'll dig into each of these four strategies and separate fact from fiction. But before we get started, a reminder to please rate and review Multilinguish wherever you listen. And be sure you're subscribed so you get new episodes as soon as they're released. Now, let's get mystical. I'm joined by Jen Jordan, Steph Koifman, and Thomas Moore Devlin. Hello, everyone. Hello. Hi, Dylan. Hello. Did you enjoy that ASMR at the beginning there? No. Um. <laughs> <laughs> no. None of you. Okay. Well, I did. I thank did. you, Steph. True. It's not hero. you, it's me. Yeah. I get that a lot. <laughs> I'm not really into the tapping. Okay. Well, everyone has different um, favorite ASMR triggers. Well, I just want our listeners to know that Dylan apparently has specific implements that he uses <laughs> for ASMR. <laughs> specific tools. Yeah. But he's co-opted for throughout the office. Yes, I've gathered. <laughs> I tried a few things, actually. I tried some a piece of foam before, <laughs> and uh, it didn't really sound that great, but... I think I found the perfect combo. So I'm really glad we were able to do that experiment together. Um, So we're talking about ASMR first um, as a possible means of learning a language without really trying. Um, So I guess to start, how familiar are you all with ASMR? I understand the concept. I'm just having trouble understanding how it would apply in a language learning context. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would say I think the only reason I know about ASMR is through my coworkers. Fair. The New Yorker did a video about ASMR, and I had heard of it before then, but I think that was when like, I finally knew like, what it was, and that's also when I diagnosed myself with misophonia. What's that, Thomas? Misophonia, especially when applied to ASMR, is when these sounds trigger not a feeling of pleasure, but in fact a feeling of like abject horror or hatred. Because I could not even listen. Yeah, Thomas really doesn't like ASMR, um, which is part of the reason I asked him to join us for this episode. <laughs> I feel like it's something that very few people have a gray area. They either like it or they really yeah. don't like it. So I'm a big fan of it. I actually discovered it from an article I wrote for Babbel. Um, and now I like listen to it sometimes for fun because it's like really relaxing when you're trying to fall asleep on weekends, especially. Is ASMR, though, mostly humans creating sounds, or can it be, like, rain sounds? Because that was a thing in, like, the 90s. They sold those CDs. Oh, wow, this shows how old I am. Oh, yeah. They sold, like, those, like, CDs in, like, natural stores that had, like, (laughs) rains across the savannah. And it was just, like, sounds of nature. Yeah, that can be part of it, for sure. Um, I think it's a little different than, like, There's another phenomenon where, like, certain pieces of music can, like, trigger, like, a really, like, really emotional feelings or whatever. This is a little different than that, but these are basically stimuli, whether they're sounds or sometimes they're hand movements um, in the ASMR videos, mouth sounds or other (laughs) other sounds um, that trigger a response in your brain that many people find relaxing not thomas but many people i do have to say mouth sounds is probably one of the more disgusting <laughs> words we've featured <laughs> yeah forget moist podcast. yeah mouth, mouth, sounds. mouth sounds yeah so it's, it's the whole purpose we will enjoy it because it, it's relaxing so you find it relaxing yeah i do and the whole theory is when you're relaxed you're more open to learn yeah exactly in one study in the uk they found that people who had experienced ASMR stimuli um, had lower heart rates comparable to those measured in studies like during meditation. So it has like similar benefits to meditation. um, And 
the participants also had positive emotional responses while they were watching the videos. Um, so there's still more room for studies to be done, but it seems like it can put you in a more relaxed state and lower your heart rate, um, which in turn can help you learn. Basically, a lot of it's anecdotal, but there have been anecdotal indications that ASMR can improve your focus, can help you get more sleep, and just kind of prime your mind for learning. So that's kind of the basic idea um, of how it can help. And there are some, I think, ASMRists, ASMR ASMR artists, <laughs> yes, ASMR artists, very clever, um, that focus on language that are like multilingual, right? Right. Um, so I have an example of one that I will play now. Et il se mit à descendre la rue Notre-Dame de Lorette. Tapping. So that was the French ASM artist Elise um, speaking of French and doing some tapping. So that's kind of, in addition to ASMR in English or no talking or whatever that can help prime your mind for learning, there are also some ASM artists who use specific languages and specific words in other languages as triggers, um, partially because those words are, are not in our normal vocabulary. So hearing them can be really soothing in some cases. Um, and others are specifically trying to teach people certain words in other languages just by whispering those words. I wonder if like, if you learn languages with ASMR, if it just triggers a Pavlovian response every time you hear that language, do you just get spine tingles? Oh, that would be kind of cool, actually, if you could like right. associate feeling relaxed with hearing a certain language. Yeah. Although I, I bet they pick the words to like pretty words. Like yes. you talked about like the most like mm -hmm. nice sounding, beautiful words. I oh, yeah. Steph, you words. did some research on that. Yeah, a little bit. The most soothing words. Because I don't think you're going to choose like harsh sounding words in no. ASMR. Definitely not. And... French is a good example because a lot of people find French very soothing. So I was just going to ask if there are any, let's say, German ASMR artists. <laughs> <laughs> Not that I have come across, um, but who knows? There might be. I've definitely I've come across Spanish, French. I think there was an Italian one, uh, Russian for sure, Polish. Um, one of my favorite ASMR artists uses Polish words in some of his videos to act as a trigger. They're very soothing. Okay. Um, so yeah, those are the different ways that ASMR can sort of indirectly help in language learning. I don't know if, if you all are buying it or. I feel like you're the only one who's into this idea. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like the rest of us are just kind of like, mm, not for us. Yeah, that's fair, that's fair. I buy this. I buy the reasoning. Okay, but I just can tell for me it would not work because it's just I hear bad sounds. You hear sounds, and then <laughs> I hear bad feels, sounds. Feels they're all bad. Yeah, I, I see dead people. <laughs> I, like it. I hear bad sounds. <laughs> they're bad. They like. I feel like I can feel my spine just like shuddering when I hear. Well, something. it's supposed to be a nice spine tingle, but. My spine has never been tingled nicely. <laughs> it's just always well, bad. Always. Sounds like a you problem. Yep. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's ASMR. All right. So moving on to our next alternative language learning method, hypnosis. I'm going to play you a brief clip to set the mood. What's wrong with these people? Sick? One over the eight? Neither. They're hypnotized. Using total strangers as subjects, here's a demonstration by the famous hypnotist Richard Payne. First, he takes his three subjects for a bicycle ride. Now concentrate. Concentrate towards me. Now on the word three, understand on the word three, you're going to have a race. You are going to have a race. One, two, three. You're racing now. Pedal faster, faster. That was a clip from the 1949 film Hypnotist, black and white British film. So just to give you a flavor of the old fashioned view of hypnotism. Um, but have any of you participated in any sort of hypnosis, maybe hypnosis, maybe at like a school event or something? No, but I kind of wish I did. 
Yeah, I I'm too much of a skeptic to. I think you really have to want to be hypnotized for it to work. It's yeah. one of those things you have to kind of like opt into, and I never, not not a big fan. I have always been too scared that I'd like start doing something very embarrassing. <laughs> so I've gone to the things, but I would never volunteer. I don't know. I remember specifically being in high school and I'm like, what if I'm under hypnosis? And then I say who I have a crush on and then she knows. Oh <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> but you've, you've watched the shows. Yeah. So you kind of get the vibe. Hypnosis is, is putting people in a state of mind so that they're more open to the power of suggestion um, so you put them in this relaxed trance like state and then tell them to do things. And they, I mean, I don't know how much of it is just like going along with it, but it's said to be that they kind of are almost subconsciously going along with whatever they're told. Um, so I actually interviewed Dr. Steve G Jones, who is a practicing hypnotist and, uh, Apparently he works with some celebrities and higher level clients. Um, And he kind of talked about how hypnosis gets your mind ready um, for learning. And I think a lot of the challenges with any kind of learning uh, have to do with, you know, being calm during the, when you're putting it in the the entry process and act, and then be having a uh, a, a mechanism uh, that you can access or a procedure that will access the mechanism for recall. So a lot of times when people learn things, they you know they're, they're good at learning things, but when it comes time to actually use it, uh, they don't have a an efficient process to access that information. So hypnosis, when used for learning languages allows you to have that power, also the power to kind of take it out and use it when mm-hmm. you need it. So are you buying it? I guess my question is, I think hypnosis, when you think about it, is those big shows where it's like you get people to do wild and crazy things on a cruise ship, for example. <laughs> is, but is there also... Because I feel like also, isn't hypnosis part of like regular psychotherapy? Isn't that a real thing? Yeah, you can go see like, you can have private sessions with a hypnotist, which is part of what uh, Dr. Jones does. Um, and they will work with you on your specific barrier that you're trying to get over or if you're trying to quit smoking or whatever the case may be. Um, and they also... They can either see you in person or they also, a lot of them have recordings that you can listen to on your own time um, that kind of do the same thing, which is to try to relax your mind and get you into a more accepting state, I guess you could say. Um, I actually have one more clip from him about this. Hold on. You know, you can do anything you put your mind to and the subconscious mind is usually the bottleneck. That's usually the challenge. You know, people think in their conscious mind, I'm going to do that. And then subconsciously, they've all these programs running in there, such as I can't learn a foreign language program. And so hypnosis right. helps you to bypass all of that. Here's the thing. I don't think it's in my subconscious mind that's like not getting me to speak the language that I, the way I want to. Like, <laughs> I think it's the fact that like, I can't remember vocabulary when I'm actually confronted with a real human. So for <laughs> you, it's conscious. Yeah, I mean, I think part of it, like, I think there's something to be said for putting yourself in a state where you're not distracted um, or not thinking about something else and trying to focus on, like, a task deeply. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think that's something that a lot of people struggle with in, in, like, life in general with phones and electronics and and everything else. But I don't think it's, like, a subconscious state that I'm lacking. But it is is kind of, like, anxiety or fear-based, though, right? Because... I guess the idea is that people wouldn't have as much trouble recalling that information if they weren't in the hot seat, so to speak. That's true, I guess. So just to be clear on this section, what you're suggesting for helping our language learning is I call up my neighborhood hypnotists and say, hey, come over. And then they hypnotize me. And then I fire up my Babel app and then do some lessons under the influence (laughs) <laughs> and that's how I'm going to master the language. That's Under sure. the influence of <laughs> hypnosis. Um, sure, you could invite him over or... <laughs> well, you could be under the influence of your own thought loops and psychoses. 
Yes, I just want to know exactly what method you're proposing. <laughs> yeah, I think that's. I think it contextualizes yeah. for us. I'm. Yeah, I'm not proposing any method. To be clear, we're just examining them. But, um, for instance, there are recordings available online of hypnosis sessions, for lack of a better word, um, specifically focused on learning new things or staying focused or even learning a new language. Um, so the idea is you could listen to this recording every night or every morning or whatever for a couple of weeks. Um, and l afterward, later that day, um, you could, or the next morning, you could study the language. Um, and the hope is that you would be in the right mind space and headspace, I guess and uh, be more confident in yourself um, and be able to learn more. Also, isn't there like a strategy where if you practice like meditation or I guess hip this could also apply to hypnosis where you can sort of like snap yourself into a state of like deeper concentration and like more, not like snap yourself into subconscious, but something along those lines too. So I'm wondering if there, maybe there's some merit there, like if you can get yourself to a space where you're able to focus more, or able to like go back to a mantra that's like, I can do this versus this is so hard. I'm never going to master French. Yeah. I think that's, I think that's like the flow state where like, you're just really, really in what you're doing. You're really concentrated and you feel like you can do whatever it takes. Can you hypnotize yourself using ASMR? That is a great question <laughs> that I don't know the answer to, but if you would like to try combining methods, please do and report back. Yeah, get back to us on that. I do you want to say this sounds very similar to meditation, as you mentioned? Yes. That's like, kind of what, that's kind of my dumb question is like, where is the line exactly? Is it just hypnosis is like a more woo woo phrase? Probably. Um, and like, I don't know, I guess, I mean, you can do meditation with a therapist. I feel like you have, I feel like hypnosis is supposed to be with a person who's specially trained in hypnosis. Mm -hmm. It can be a therapist also, but I don't know. I do think that meditation is more about clearing your mind of thoughts, whereas hypnosis is more like trying to get yourself to do something or access your subconscious to do something. So yeah. maybe there's like a distinction there in terms of like the purpose and what you're actually supposed to be doing. Yeah. But I do agree they're along the same lines. And I think every, pretty much everything we're talking about today falls into that same I will, category. I will offer one caveat. Sure. I don't think meditation is about clearing your mind of thoughts so much as just being able to actually focus on what's going on around you in the moment to be in the moment to be yeah exactly yeah, yeah to like good, pay attention to your breathing like pay attention to the sounds around you Mind mindfulness yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah that's a good point that's a good clarification yeah. which yeah i guess is a little different than hypnosis um okay well shall we move on i mean i feel like this one couldn't hurt like, yeah it's easy enough to access some of this material right like right. if you wanted to it's try all it. online <laughs> how does everyone else feel yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't think I'd jump to it. I will say, I don't think this would be my first like. Yeah, I'm having a little trouble with my Spanish vocabulary. Mm -hmm. Let me look up a hypnosis tape. <laughs> I don't know what voice that is. I'm sorry, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Steph, what about you? I don't think it would be my first um, recourse. Mm. Interesting. Okay. I think I wouldn't go out of my way to go to a hypnotist, but if someone like came to the Babel office and was offering free <laughs> hypnosis. I was like, sure. Right. So someone shows up at your door. Uh -huh. and it's just like, can I hypnotize you, ma'am? <laughs> she says, yes. No, I mean, that's a little weirder. I think it would have to be like, you know, I have a clear sense of this person's mm -hmm. credentials. Motives. I know what we're doing for our next team building. Activity. Yes. <laughs> Let's get a hypnotist in here. After the break, what's the deal with crystals? And can you really learn a language in your sleep? We'll be right back. Multilinguish is brought to you by Babbel, the language app. So it's time for another language learning lightning round. Uh, Jen, let's start with you. What's the most embarrassing language mistake you've ever made? So in Paris, I told my taxi driver, I'm horny. <laughs> what I said was, je suis chaud, which means I am hot. It literally, tra it tra literally translates to I am hot, but it actually means I'm horny. Um, you need to say je suis chaud. And I knew that but was also tired it was like 5 30 and i was going to the airport so 
definitely don't make that mistake. Big yikes. Okay, David, what about you? Okay, I made the most classic mistake that any Spanish speaker can make and got laughed at by my entire class in high school. And that mistake is if you're trying to say, I'm embarrassed, you actually don't say the word in Spanish that sounds most like the word embarrassed in English, which is embarazado or embarazada, because that actually means pregnant. So when you say estoy embarazado, that means I'm pregnant. And it only serves to make you more embarrassed than you already were. It would be miraculous, though. That would be a, absolutely... <laughs> I feel like you could start a religion from that. That is classic. Uh, Thomas, what's your language mistake? I don't know if it's that embarrassing, but whenever I'm in a different country, my brain does not know how to deal with saying excuse me. So usually it defaults to lo siento, and it does not matter if I am in Germany or France or whatever. If someone bumps into me, I will just immediately go lo siento, and I say it in a bad accent, so they stare at me. It's like, you're not Spanish? And I'm like, I know. I'm so sorry. Amazing. Thank you all for uh, sharing those difficult moments. With Babbel, you don't have to worry about making mistakes because Babbel helps you speak a new language with confidence and their 10 to 15 minute lessons are easy to fit into your schedule. We're offering multilingual listeners 50% off a three month subscription. New customers can get this offer by visiting babbel.com slash podcast. That's B-A-B-B-E-L dot com slash podcast. So we're getting even a little more mystical now. Um, and moving into healing crystals. <laughs> Get pumped. It's my favorite learning method. Maybe this is why I haven't made as much progress as I wanted Oh my God, to. you brought some in. I brought I a couple of crystals and I would like you guys to <laughs> hold them for a moment <laughs> okay. and Maybe tell us, them. describe them first. and tell us how they make you feel. Where'd you get these? I got these from a crystal shop in Manhattan called Rockstar Crystals. I, I think I can just, we'll pass them along. Can I have one of them? I feel like yeah. you're what, mixing you're them. Yeah, you're, you're mixing, you're mixing yeah. them. You got to okay. hold them each separately. You're mixing the energies. with. I'm I mean. holding, <laughs> wow, getting that explicit tag. What am I supposed to do with them? You should all, yeah, I'm holding, I would call it a purple one. <laughs> what is it? It's amethyst. Oh, I do like amethyst. So I'm holding what appears to be a little piece of quartz. Yes, clear quartz. Good job, mm. Steph. Well, I mean, I am I am the person at Babel that would know these yes. things. So. <laughs> I would hope so. I have to say, though, for all of like my woo inclinations, I have a lot of friends who swear by crystals. Mm -hmm. They've never really done anything for me that I can... You what know do, what I mean? What does swearing by crystals mean? Like meaning like it really does help them like clear their head or Right, like it actually does have some sort center. of effect on their state of mind. I've never really been able to feel it. Yeah. But I'm open to it. So let's yeah. back up a second and talk about what it is like in terms of how people use crystals and people who believe in crystals what they think that they do. Um, so basically it's kind of an alternative medicine, um, that each crystal is thought to contain certain properties that help your mental and or physical health. Um, but I just want to start with a caveat, um, that most Western scientists consider this a pseudoscience. Um, and there have not been many studies, on their effectiveness, um, but it's thought to have some sort of placebo effect at play. So keep that in mind as we discuss this. Um, but what do any of you know anything about crystals or have you had any inner experiences? I had a rock collection growing up. Does that count? <laughs> Were they crystals? <laughs> some of them were. Okay. I was going to ask, do you remember when you'd go to like some sort of gift shop or other <laughs> store? I know what you're going to say. And they just had like, it was like a wooden contraption filled with like crystals and rocks that were really smooth. With Did the velvet bag. Get, well, yeah. yeah. Did you guys ever get geodes? No. No. Split the geode and then sometimes there's crystals inside and sometimes it's horribly disappointing. <laughs> and then you'd like chip them out and then I had a rock tumbler and you would tumble them to get them to be smooth. No, just me. <laughs> just you. I just always found the like little rock shanty sales. Just like <laughs> they have really somehow come up with 
probably the highest percentage of pro profit. They're selling me rocks, but they're so smooth that I wish to hold them. <laughs> <laughs> That's, I think, the most appealing thing about holding this, this amethyst is the fact it's very smooth. If it was like a rock of amethyst that was still jagged the way like, you know, like amethyst crystals are like spiky. Yeah. I feel like it would not have the same effect. I just like holding this because like I can fiddle with it and it's super smooth and like I can like touch it. It feels nice. True. I, I mean, I do have some crystals around my apartment, but like I said, I mean, I can't really say for sure that they've had any sort of bearing on anything other than the fact that I like the way they look. Um, right. I know, I mean, I have, you know, a lot of friends in the woo or spiritual or metaphysical community and um, a lot of them will like hold them when they meditate. They might put a little one in their pocket or their bra mm -hmm. or like keep it on their body um, if they, you know, need it for specific reasons. I have like a esthetician that I go to for facial sometimes and um, she likes to put like a little piece of rose quartz on the client's heart center well she, it's like it's relaxing yeah um, it's nice and it's true that they're supposed to especially the different colors like correlate with different uh the chakras mm -hmm. of your body um so you're supposed to place them on certain parts or i think the idea i mean i could be wrong um i think the idea is that the crystals have like a, a certain like a I don't know what you would call it, like an atomic structure, like basically similar to like how like there's silicone in your computer, right? Like it, it contains, it encodes information. Hmm. Um, Interesting. Interesting. So what does this have to do with language yeah. learning? Okay. So <laughs> the, the, the key question. Um, so I also wanted to know if that was a thing. Um, actually, I think Jen, you wanted to know if that was a thing. So I That's investigated true. for you. <laughs> this is one of my pitches that yes. you didn't you put off for doing for like, for like a year. <laughs> and then I did it. Um, so I went to Rockstar Crystal Shop and I met the assistant manager who gave me his name as Emerald, which is definitely his birth name. Um, <laughs> uh, but he was actually really helpful and he gave me some pointers on the best crystals that might help with learning generally and with learning languages specifically. Um, so the four he mentioned were amethyst, um, because it is really good for your mental health and psychic protection, clear quartz, which is the other one we have here, which is good for clearing bad thoughts and also helps with storing memory and purifying the aura. Um, fluorite, which is the mineral form of calcium fluoride. And that is a crystal of the mind um, and helps with mental focus. And lastly, well, those are the three main crystal types. But the other note is that the colors purple and white or clear are supposedly the best colors for mental clarity um, and for learning specifically. I would also like to um, add that I think orange stones would probably yeah. be good for. Um, because I think that there's some sort of like... Um, there's like a like an affinity based like um, signification system with these things okay. where orange is the color of mercury mercury is the planet of learning and communication so I guess in my limited experience with crystals um, I've noticed that like the orange stones tend to be associated with mercury related interesting things. okay yeah so purple orange and white look for those um, so I guess the idea is that you could hold one or wear one around your neck on a necklace or put one in your pocket or even like under your pillow. Um, and that, that would create good energies for learning. Here's the thing. It sounds like this comes back down to like finding different ways to concentrate True. or like get yourself in a better state of mind to do an activity, like an activity that involves some form of like thinking or concentration. So, like, if holding a crystal is the thing that gets you there or listening to a hypnosis tape and then studying, like, I think any of these work if you, if that's what works for you. Right. Even if any or all of them are based in a placebo effect, um, it still could work for you because it helps you feel focused and relaxed and all that. Here's another question. So, the piece of clear quartz that I'm holding is, like, Maybe the size of like a marble. It's very smooth. Yes. How much was this? 
Um, I believe it was two or three (laughs) dollars. This is like one of those capitalizing on wellness. Mm. Yes. They they, they are really overpriced in certain places. I feel like this is like, and we're also in the middle of Manhattan, but I feel like this is one of those capitalism driven trends. Absolutely. Maybe other more well-intentioned just gotta find We're looking at you, Gwyneth Paltrow. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I can't say that on this podcast. Goop it up. Yeah. Quick yay or nay on crystals. I'm going to go with the same thing that I said before. I don't think it would be like the first uh, method I would choose, but... I yeah. feel like I'm more into crystals than I am any of the other methods you've talked about really? so far. I think they're pretty. I like shiny things. I had a rock collection... It doesn't involve talking to a creepy dude. Don't have to talk to anybody. <laughs> They're just pretty and they hang out and I can put them out under a full moon and recharge them. Mm-hmm. Like I can kind of be into that. You don't even need an outlet. Yeah. Personally, no. It's going to be a no from me. <laughs> <laughs> I, okay. I, I wouldn't disparage someone else if that's what works for right. them. And that, how, who am I to say that I know everything that, about how the world works? But eh, I will go f- to those rock shanties again. And get some more smooth rocks to hold, though. (laughs) Great. Well, last but certainly not least, have you ever wished you could learn something in your sleep? Who doesn't? (laughs) Yep. I'm trying to rack my brain right now to remember if I actually did something like this once. (laughs) Maybe, like, when I was a child? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I mean, there are a lot of stories and even like pop culture references oh, you know to what? learning in your sleep when i was um studying for my bat mitzvah my half torah portion i think i played the cassette in my sleep because i was i thought it might help did it me memorize it i don't know i mean i, I definitely i definitely had to do a lot of repetition and a lot of practice but yeah, yeah. so hypnopedia is the idea that you can learn in your sleep just by hearing recordings played while you sleep um it has been largely debunked it does not work we can say that for a fact um there are some examples of this in pop culture they do something like this in the book brave new world um there's also an episode of dexter's laboratory i believe yes do you all remember this episode (laughs) You're the only person who's talked about it. Talk Please tell us well, about it. as Dexter is another redhead in media, I feel the need to <laughs> be supportive. So the episode is, he's studying for a French quiz. And so he has, both, like, he's a scientist, but it's kind of an old-fashioned contraption where he has French on a record. But then after he falls asleep, it starts skipping. So he just keeps learning the phrase omelette du fromage or <laughs> cheese omelette over and over again. <laughs> and then the joke is the next day, like, that's all he needs to get by. And then the only question on the quiz is omelette du fromage. And then also all of the women swoon because he's speaking French. That's but then amazing. He, yeah. But then he can't say any other terms at all because it's overwritten his brain. So he tries to get back into the lab with his English password and it doesn't work. And then it blows up. <sighs> wow. What a ride. Well... <laughs> Yeah, so that is not nonfiction. (laughs) Um, Basically, in the 1950s, these researchers did a study where they played a recording of someone listing trivia facts while participants slept. And when the participants awoke, they recalled none of the facts. Shocking. I mean, could it work if you already know the things that you are just hearing overnight, but it's like reinforcing it? There's really nothing I don't there. Are you sure? I think so because you're asleep. However, <laughs> there is something with sleep. It's just not that. Wait, but have you all ever heard like, like you you have a dream and then you wake up and you realize something external influenced that dream though? Yes. Sometimes, yeah. yeah. I'll have yeah. a dream about like birds and then I'll wake up and there'll be birds around me. Or like I'll have a dream I'm eating a big marshmallow and then I wake up <laughs> and the pillow's gone. <laughs> <laughs> It's a terrible joke. (laughs) You're fired. (laughs) The other thing about sleep is that it can help you learn because you got enough sleep, which (laughs) is kind of obvious. Um, But there have been a lot of studies about this and like there are specific scientific reasons and ways sleep, getting enough sleep can help you learn a language. Um, So there's a phase of sleep that's not REM or REM, 
called slow wave sleep or SWS. Um, and this is really important for memory processing. So basically some researchers taught participants new vocab words and then tested them on them later that day. But then there was an experimental group who learned the new vocab words and then went to sleep and then were tested the next day. And the people who went to sleep in between recalled the words a lot better. Um, so basically the idea is that when you're in this SWS phase of sleep, your memories really get ingrained um, and it helps you remember things that you learned. So getting sleep is important for learning a language. I also thought there was some study or like merit to studying right before bed. I don't know if any of your studies mentioned this, but my, so my whole thing was I would have to memorize poems and like Pushkin for my Russian class, which was at like 830 in the morning on Tuesdays and Thursdays, something ridiculous like that. <laughs> so what I would do is I would like, study Russian and like me like read the poem over and over and over again right before bed so I could like because you'd have to like recite it in front of mm -hmm. the entire class it was like part of your grade and so that every sounds traumatic it's so <laughs> traumatic and I still like remembered stupid poetry but I don't remember what the words mean. <laughs> it's very strange um so I would like recite the poem over and over again and I would like sleep on it too just for like extra measure in case you know <laughs> like, like actually sleep on I the book like, or the paper. Yeah, like I would like put it in my Russian book and then like put it under my pillow. But Ow. I would like think about, well, I like a firm pillow, Dylan. <laughs> 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 so, and then I would like sleep on it, but I would like think about the poem as I was falling asleep too, because I thought if I slept right after I studied, my brain would like take that information. It. Yeah, I, I thought like I would like be able to dream about it. And my, actually my roommate in college told me that more than once, she heard me like reciting Russian in my sleep. Oh, that's wow. creepy. Science. Science rules. I feel like there's two points there. <laughs> one, well, osmosis is one thing. And that's the belief that like, if you sleep on your book, it will go into your head. Because osmosis <laughs> refers to water moving between cells. Yeah. Osmosis Jones, great film. <laughs> Thank you, Dylan. You're welcome. That was a good film. I was thinking about it the other day, like, <laughs> I'm surprised that that hasn't really carried Can we go back to my weight. thing now? No. <laughs> But, and then the other, I definitely, I also vote for the Babel magazine about when's the best time to study and right before going to sleep or even taking a nap is definitely better because that's when, because you need to move memories from short term, which is the, like, you can keep three to 10 things in short term, then it moves to long term, but then there's also like another level, which you need sleep. I think that with. involves the SWS. Yeah. So it's probably like, it's still in your short term memory. It's still fresher if you study right before bed so I mean, it worked for me has so, merit yeah i always was able to memorize all of my russian poetry so <laughs> there you go um so i mean i guess i don't <laughs> i don't really need to ask if you believe that you should sleep sleep good <laughs> or bad i'm not so sure <laughs> but i guess kind of the idea of making sure that you learn and then sleep before you try to use what you've learned. How would you actually put this into practice? So you would study right before you go to bed, basically. That's what you're saying. If you had to like build a learning habit, you would study before bed. I think so. I think that makes the most sense. Um, and also the, the other point from this is that if say you have a test that you're taking on a foreign language, don't cram or any topic, but don't like cram right before the test like that same day because you won't have that slow wave sleep to ingrain it. So you should study the day before at least. Sorry, procrastinators. Yeah, I was also thinking just like, if you would, are thinking of staying up late and getting bad sleep to study, then you should just sleep instead. So that's, that's true. I would tell myself in college. It's like, no, no. No all-nighters. I'm not sleeping. I'm consolidating memories. <laughs> so we have ASMR hypnosis, crystals, and sleep. And the basic takeaway is that any of these could potentially help anyone indirectly by putting them in a relaxed mindset or the right state for learning um, or helping improve their memory and focus. But in general, this would be a supplement to 
another form of learning or studying because these methods won't teach you a language. Um, but I, I am curious to know if any of you have any other interesting or crazy ways you've tried to learn things that you remember. I know the sleeping on your Russian textbook was <laughs> certainly yeah. unique. Maybe, maybe a craziest one. I don't know. And has no one else done anything like that? Like, uh, I wouldn't sleep on my books. But like, I yeah, no, sleep. they're like crazy, like either passive or like superstitious things you did to like learn. Hmm. You guys were just like that smart. I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Thomas. Well, I, I mean, I mentioned already that I tried playing the recording of my Haftorah portion. That's true. Playing. That's yeah. That's but definitely. It's up not there. like I memorized it like that alone. You know. Right. 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 You, yeah. No. You did other. You used other techniques as well. Yeah. I don't know if this counts as learning technique, but more of like a producing foreign language technique which is we've talked about this before because it's popular drinking <laughs> oh yes ah the metaphysical art of alcohol yeah. <laughs> so this isn't so much like drinking when you're studying and then you'll remember it better but when i am with people who don't speak english and i want to say spanish because spanish is probably my second language i'm best at if i'm drinking after a while i get better at spanish just because when I stop being constantly scared of whether I'm about to make a mistake because I'm drinking and like I'm going to make lots of mistakes both with the language and probably in other ways, I could just get better because then, because the person you're speaking to doesn't care if you like conjugate something wrong once in a while. They just are trying to get the gist and it right. facilitates it. I think that goes along with hypnosis too. It's like releasing your inhibitions. Yeah. I also believe there was a specific study. So this isn't just anecdotal. Right, right, right. But they looked at pronunciation, and people are better at pronunciation of words when they've had some to drink. There's a obviously it's a like point. a bell curve. Yeah. yeah. Not too much. It'll drop off eventually. <laughs> <laughs> I will say, like, it probably has a detrimental effect in terms of, like, remembering things and learning because you are just, like, also killing brain cells. Yes. I'm not <laughs> encouraging anyone to drink, but I'm just saying... It definitely helps, though. I've been there. Great. Well, thank you all for joining me. This has been fun. Um, feel free to take a crystal on your way out. <laughs> you you like didn't bring enough for all of us. Shh, they're expensive. Like a take a crystal, leave a crystal jar. <laughs> <laughs> all, right. all right. See you later. Thanks, Dylan. Bye. Bye. Multilinguish is produced by the content team at Babbel. We are Thomas Moore Devlin. David Duchin. Steph Poifman. Dylan Lyons. And I'm Jen Jordan. Ruben Vilesh makes us sound good. Our logo was designed by Ali Zhao. You can read more about today's episode topic and more on Babbel Magazine. Just visit B-A-B-B-E-L dot com slash magazine. Say hi on social media by finding us at Babbel USA, all one word. Finally, please rate and review this podcast. We really appreciate it.